Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This time of the year is when many Year 11 students will be learning about markets. Let's start with a definition. A market is the situation where buyers and sellers meet for the purpose of exchange. A typical market model in economics includes demand and supply. Supply represents the seller's interests, while demand represents the buyer's, and that's what we'll be focusing on today. Demand is defined as the quantity that consumers are willing and able to purchase at various prices at a given point in time. Typically, quantity demanded has a negative correlation with price. In other words, as price of the product increases, demand falls. This is illustrated by the demand curve when we plot quantity against price, and it's called the law of demand. Three reasons for this negative correlation are that consumers can afford less of the product, and we call this the income effect. And they will find less costly substitutes, which we call the substitution effect. These are the two main arguments, but there's also the law of diminishing marginal utility which is an extension concept. What is the law of diminishing marginal utility? Well, imagine going to a burger joint really hungry. Because you're hungry, you're going to be willing to pay a high price for the first burger. After that first burger, you're going to be less hungry. So you'll get less satisfaction from that next burger and you'll be willing to pay a lower price. After that second burger, you'll pay an even lower price for the third and so on. This demonstrates the law of diminishing marginal utility. In economics, utility means satisfaction from consumption, and marginal means for every extra unit. So the definition of the law of diminishing utility is in its name. The concept states that for every extra unit that you consume, the satisfaction derived from the product and the price offered for it will fall. This contributes to the negative correlation between quantity and price in the demand curve. Again, this is an extension concept, so just focus on the first two reasons for the law of demand. Next, let's talk about the influences on demand. The first influence that we should talk about is the price of the good itself. As we've established with the law of demand, increasing the price will cause quantities demanded to fall. We call this a contraction in demand, and it's illustrated as a movement along the curve to the left. The opposite is when we lower the price of the good itself, causing an expansion in demand and a movement to the right. Price of the product itself is the only influence that causes expansions, contractions, or movements along the curve. All the other influences cause shifts in the whole curve, which we will call increases or decreases in demand. It's very important to use the right terminology to maximize your marks in exams. One influence that can cause a shift in the demand curve is the income levels in the market. If the buyers experience an increase in income, they would be willing to buy a higher quantity for the same price, shown by the demand curve shifting to the right. If their incomes are falling, they would decrease their demand, shifting it to the left. Notice the language that I'm using. This is called a shift, as opposed to a movement. Increase or decrease, as opposed to expansion or contraction. Another influence that's related to this is population size. Because there'll be more buyers who are willing and able to purchase the product, an increase in population size will cause an increase in demand, shifting it to the right. This means that even if you kept the product at the same price, quantity demanded will increase. Let's look at another influence. A simple change in consumer taste or preference will cause a shift in demand. If people start to prefer an alternative product, they'll spend less than our product, so demand for our product will decrease. This brings me to the next influence, price of substitutes. If a competitor lowers their prices, demand for our product will decrease. That is, at the same price, we'll be able to sell a lower quantity. Conversely, if they increase their price, customers will come to our product, causing demand for our product to increase. Related to that is price of complementary goods. A complementary good is a product that is typically used in conjunction with another product, like petrol cars and petrol. If the price for one of these products increase, demand will probably fall for the other product too. For example, if the price of cars increase, people will buy less cars and therefore decrease demand for petrol. If the price for petrol increases, people may forego their car and take public transport instead. The last influence on demand in the syllabus is expected future prices. There's this bakery that I often buy from. Their bread is baked fresh every day. So every evening, they end up selling leftover bread at a discount. So with an expectation that the price will fall later on, how will my demand for that bread look during the day? I'm not buying it. I'm going to put off my demand and buy it later when the price drops. That's how expected future prices affect our demand. If I expect future prices to fall, I'll lower my current demand. If I expect future prices to rise, 
my current demand will increase. So these are the influences on demand. Let's go through a few more examples to solidify what we've learned. Let's look at the demand for toilet paper. I know, very topical, right? How do you think demand for toilet paper will be influenced by these scenarios? First scenario, the price of toilet paper is rising. So what do you think? A rise in the price of toilet paper itself would cause a contraction in the demand for toilet paper. My second scenario is this. Toilet paper ads have been very successful. This would cause customers to increase their demand for toilet paper, shifting the demand curve to the right. Scenario number three, the price of toilet paper is expected to rise. This would cause people to stock up in advance and current demand would increase, shifting to the right. Scenario number four, a recession causes household incomes to fall. This means less people can afford toilet paper. The demand would decrease, shifting left. I hope I've made demand easy for you to understand. Next lesson, we'll be going deeper into demand by looking at the concept of price elasticity. After that, we'll be looking at supply. The terminology that we've learned today will be useful for that too. Click the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you.